Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for Fresh from the Studio tonight. Um, we're so pleased to have three women in their work artists share upcoming projects and work with all of us. Um, we're gonna look at some paintings, get a sneak peek of performance and some photography. Um, tonight, Deborah Cole will share images from an ongoing project called Women in Their Art. Cassie Ganeen will present a few of her finished paintings and work for an upcoming show she has. And then Andrea Munez Martinez will give us a sneak peek of ongoing series of paintings and performance art. Um, the way the program works is that each artist will present for 10 minutes. At the end of the third presentation, we'll open it up for questions and comments for all the artists while they're presenting uh, please feel free to put any questions or comments in the chat and we'll talk about them at the end. Then we'll move into break rooms where you can say hello and talk directly with the artist. Um, and these breakout rooms will be open for about 10 minutes. And then we'll wrap up, um, talk about any upcoming events that Women in Their Work has, any upcoming events anyone in the audience has. Um, and share social media or websites, any sort of thing that you want to share with the group. Um, so with that said, Andrea, are you ready to start? Yes, I am. Hello. My name, um, well, welcome to my studio. I'm in East Austin on East 6th Street. And I live and work in this 900 square foot loft. Um, it has one long wall that is perfect for me to make an 18 foot painting or several six foot paintings. Everything can be moved around to accommodate working a very large scale. But today my studio is set up to teach and make smaller paintings using my e easel back here. Um, I'd like to eventually find studio space that is work only, but until um, I can do that, this space works just fine. So um, now I'd like to share with you um, what's fresh from my studio. So I'm gonna share this screen. And um, so my name is Andrea Munoz Martinez. I'm a visual and performance artist. I grew up in South Texas, where hill country meets brush country. It is the vitality and depth of this vast landscape that my art evokes. Inspired by the writings of the theorist Gloria Anzaldúa, who described the border as a 1,950 mile long open wound, I render a place I call Borderlandia, a reimagined borderland full of life and movement. Through painting, drawing, video, and performance, I invite people to contemplate the beauty that exists in a land where people negotiate their place, where people thrive and struggle, and where people resist the idea of unjust borders. From this studio, I live, work, and teach. I love to inspire creativity. An important goal for me as a teacher is to show people how to make art a part of their lives every day. XOXO Amo is a signature I use to protect myself and the work. Sometimes I express ideas that are hard for some audiences to understand. I sign XOXO because I love the audience I make paintings for. I dedicate my affection to those that inspire my paintings. My initials are AMM. Ammo is for my father who taught me how to hunt ammunition for my mother who gave me a strong first name. I am Amo. I was born in brush country on Gloria Anzaldúa's border. It's her, El Cenote, that I paint in trances. I am a border artist because I grew up in the borderlands of South Texas and because my paintings take the border and boundaries as their subject. My paintings are a protest to the injustice of violence and militarization of the US-Mexican border. Borderlandia is made up of a series of dogs, grids, cheese bus, targets, roaches, and garas malas. Now I wanna show you a new video of my performance of Malacara, un autoretrato.
Recently, I began to insert dogs into scenes of Bordelandia. Dog heads and bodies float, lay, and sit on the landscape. Flying, levitating, they are part of the energy exchanged when a border is crossed, moved, or destroyed. This energy is often manifested as the anxiety and pain of crossing through the darkness of night. Dogs in Bordelandia become guardians and companions. They pro provide protection and guidance to border crossers. A guardian that is with us through a very traumatic experience provides a witness to our journey. Someone that knows what we have been through can also help us to heal from whatever trauma border crossing has created. Portraits of dogs insert humor, comfort, and joy into difficult but urgent realities about the borderlands. Today, you can see these works in an exhibition called Dogs Heal in Bordelandia at Lincoln Pen Gallery, which is just down the street from my studio here in Austin. And on March 27th, I invite you to um, check out our IG Live. I'll be performing a reading of Gloria's Aldoa's work surrounded by the dogs of Bordelandia. Um, now I'd like to um, take a few minutes to show you my studio. Um, so right here you can see I have a lot of canvases um, that I roll up and keep in these nice, um, I think there were planners that I found. And um, this is what I call like a shotgun loft. It's just one straight studio. So I can move everything around to accommodate the different paintings that I'm working on or put them all up so that I can rest to um, rest my eyes and just focus on one thing at a time. Um, and I have my, um, all my supplies all on this one table, which is protected by the plexiglass that um, I got when um, uh, Women in the Work was moving from Lavaca Street to Sesaj Chavez. And um, they had a call that they were going to um, have uh, we could go and pick up stuff that they weren't using. And I got this bookshelf too. So um, I encourage everyone to become a member. And that's how I um, uh, had this opportunity to share my studio with you today. Um, and Diane, um, what's my, the time? I'm sorry, I thought it was at nine minutes already. No, um, so, okay. So I wanted to show you um, the works that I'm working on right now. So I have some dog paintings um, and I'm working on about, I can work up to, up to like 15 paintings now that I'm working smaller. Um, so these uh, started as grids, what I call grids, which is kind of like a checkerboard um, pattern. But on these 16 by 20 paintings, I've started to mix the symbols of the cheese bus, this radial pattern, X's and O's, um, targets. And recently this, this roach just decided to, this roach appeared, which I'm really excited about because I haven't really been painting roaches. I've been drawing, illustrating roaches, but they haven't come out in my paintings recently. So I'm, I'm glad that they're, they're coming out now. Um, and the way that I um, start a painting is just with, I just want to start with whatever color makes me feel good. And then um, I write the, the color wheel Roy G. Biv on this, on a piece of paper and I'll do a red and then I'll go on to an orange and a yellow and then blue, violet. Um, and then I'll just start it over and over again. These are acrylic and gouache paintings. The gouache, they're fluorescent actually. So it's really interesting to learn how to work with fluorescent colors and then just like the basic color wheel, like those colors. Um, I uh, look a lot at Cezanne um, and the Neo-Impressionist portraits. They're artists that use every color in their paintings to make um, uh, the, the image or, um, uh, every color to make one color. Because sometimes you'll just see the red, but the red is made out of oranges and yellows and greens. Um, I also wanted to share with you um, this piece right here. Sorry if that makes you dizzy. Um, 
I just started uh, to collect um, artwork too. Um, and that's a piece by Lydia Garcia who uses inks um, that she makes from natural materials. Like that one's from Pokeberry that she collected at Laguna Gloria. And that has been, um, it, that I just want to start filling my studio up with small works of artists that I know and work with. Um, and um, yeah, so that's about it. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and I'm glad to see you guys here virtually and to meet you. So thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Next up is Cassie. Hello, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen first. Give me one second. All right. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, okay. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to my studio in San Antonio, Texas. Um, thank you, Diane, and the folks at Women and, and Their Work for inviting me to share my work today. Um, just a little bit about my background, since a, a lot of you guys don't know me. Um, my name is Cassie Ganeem. Um, I am a classically trained oil painter, as well as educator here in San Antonio, Texas. I teach uh, high school art, actually. Um, I hold a BFA from Columbus College of Art and Design and an MFA from West Virginia University. Uh, a couple little of upcoming events for me are, um, I am preparing for all the work that I'm about to share with you today is going to be in a solo show at Clamp Light Studios and Gallery um, coming up very soon, April 9th, uh, April 9th through May 1st. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm also a resident artist there. Um, so to start off, um, I wanted to share a little bit um, about my subject uh, or my subject matter. Um, so when I start a, an oil painting, usually I, uh, I scour art history and I look for uh, figure paintings of women throughout art history. Uh, lately, I have been mainly looking at paintings from the Baroque and um, Rococo periods. Um, once I have selected a painting I feel has potential to use as a ground or starting off point, um, I begin um, collaging over them um, using magazines. Um, and I spend a ton of time on the collage aspect of the project. So here's one of my collages for one of the painting actually right there. So you can almost see them side by side. Um, so there's one of my collages. I spent a ton of time on that. Um, it's probably the most thoughtful part of what I do. Um, also, just as a, a side note, all of the work that I'm sharing with you today uh, was created uh, during the pandemic. So it, this pro all this work was started almost exactly a year ago. Uh, so a year ago when the lockdown began, um, you know, I started teaching from home. Um, I also had my four-year-old at home, but somehow we managed and um, I was able to actually produce a, a lot of work. Um, so it ended up um, working out really well. I was able to um, build a whole body of work during this, during this time. Uh, so that's a little bit about uh, my subject matter. Another thing that you might notice in my work is I have a lot of eyes um, and a lot of times the, the eyes that I have in my work, um, the contemporary eyes that I have will be looking directly at the viewer and a lot of times the, the eyes in the 
painting, um, the historical painting will kind of be looking off um, or not really engaging with the viewer quite as much. It's not always the case, but a lot of the times you can see it in uh, this painting here. Um, even with this title, um, so this one was actually the first one that I started at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and there was all these phrases like, don't touch your face and all these things like that. So that's the title of this painting, um, don't touch your face. Uh, and I've been working on this one. I started it at the beginning of the pandemic and then I just finished it a few days ago, really. Um, so it has been, it has literally spanned almost the whole length of the pandemic. Um, I've kind of stopped and started with this uh, particular piece a couple of times. Um, yeah, so uh, let me talk, let's share a little bit about my process. Um, so once I've created a collage, um, I start to think about um, like overarching color schemes. Um, I start to oftentimes I will um, almost as if uh, a puzzle or game or something like that, I will often plan out in advance. I will write uh, what colors I wanna have come first. Um, and so I try to sort of figure out in my head how the layering effect of paint affects each other before I actually do it. Of course, there's always happy accidents that happen in a painting. Um, so the beautiful thing is not everything is predictable, right? Um, so for example, in this painting, you can see like I have a really fluorescent pink underpainting here. Um, and then there's many, many layers on top of that. But um, a lot of times, uh, and with the previous painting, you could see there was a lime green underpainting. Uh, so I try to um, start with, think about and uh, arrange my colors by writing them, testing them out, um, that sort of thing. So, I usually start in acrylic now. Uh, like I said, I'm a classically trained oil painter. So before this, you know, I, I've done a million still life paintings in my artist's career, you know. Um, I've done tons of figure paintings. Uh, so I usually, um, traditionally it was like, you know, uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, that sort of thing is your underpainting, but I use acrylic now as my uh, underpainting and um, acrylic paint is actually relatively new to me for that reason. And I've really enjoyed the possibilities with acrylic paint and having the two go together. So I do use both acrylic and oil paint uh, together, but those um, artists out there know that they don't mix really well at all. Um, and you can't really mix them. Um, so after I do the acrylic underpainting, I really have to think about what areas in particular I want to leave the oil painting and what areas I want to leave the acrylic painting. Those are very um, important decisions that I have to make in my work because once I start doing something in an oil paint, I can't switch back to acrylic because it just doesn't technically work that way. Um, so I have to think about the image that I'm trying to create, um, the overlapping brush strokes, how they affect each other. Um, a lot of times I will keep the art historical painting in oil and then um, keep the contemporary images in acrylic, but not all the time. But I love the way the two media interact with each other. Uh, side by side and how oil paint can blend acrylic creates interesting brush strokes overlapping each other. Um, another thing that I've discovered, and if I go back, you can see it in this one. Um, oh, sorry, let's go back. So in this one, you can see I have uh, oil stick, um, which has been something that I've been learning uh, just in the past a month or so. Um, that has been a really interesting addition to line work. Um, it's basically 
like um, painting with a, or drawing on your painting. So anyways, um, I'll show you what I'm currently working on right now. Um, so this is a piece I have a couple of progress pictures for you here to see. Um, so this is lately, so I've been experimenting a lot with layering acrylic. So, and this is the piece that is right here. If I move out of the way, you can see it's significantly smaller than the big painting behind me and the ones over there. Um, just to give you, and I can even go stand by it so you can get a sense of scale. Scale is kind of hard over Zoom. Um, but uh, anyways, I have been, experimenting with acrylic poured grounds and then oil painting over top of them. And what I really liked about that is it has been able to um, show the, the texture of the, um, it's, it's basically able to show the, the marbling effect of the stone in the, um, and show through, um, because this part right here is is oil painting right here and then this part is acrylic so it's been a it's been a really fun experiment with layering the two together um, and this is my collage and you can kind of see the steps here uh, one last slide for you um, I gather a lot of my resources from nature as well um, so this picture in the middle is a photo from Big Bend State Park. Um, and I'm just really excited about the way nature can find its way to layer materials as well and um, have all these different textures and layers of um, just mineral deposits. And so I took a picture of it. And when I was creating this painting, this painting is called Coalesce. Um, I was looking at this picture a lot and I was trying to capture the same type of texture and uh, layering that this, that this photo in nature has. So, um, so anyways, uh, that is a little bit on that. And then you can see here, this is uh, oil paint over top of that acrylic ground as well. So I will share, so here is, um, so I have a lot more work. So this is another acrylic uh, ground painting here with oil paint over top of it. Um, you can see more of these images on my website, uh, email and Instagram. And I'm also a teacher, so I have a lot of teaching material on my YouTube, so. Anyways, uh, I think I'm past time. So thank you so much for listening about my work. I'm trying to stop screen. Okay. Thanks so much, Cassie. That was great. Thank you. Deborah Coles up next. All right, showing okay. Are you? I'm not seeing your screen. You're not okay. Let me move it over. Let's see. It's always a challenge with dual screens, going back and forth. Okay, let me move it over. Are we seeing it now? No. no? Okay, let me go back to...
We can see your screen, but we're seeing the desktop. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just have to move her, move her. Now for something completely different, as my name <laughs> said. Okay. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. So the the uh, title of, of this little presentation is called Women in Their Art Slash Work, because it's actually two projects um, that I'm going to talk about together. I'm a photographer and a writer, both, and I typically, uh, my style is street photography and documentary photography. I was really lucky to have 35 years in the corporate world as a business owner and um, had a lot of locations around the state and I traveled around the state a lot. And although I had the official duties of the president of the company, I also would um, added to my title photographer. So I did all of the photography for our uh, social media, our trade shows and our marketing and our awards programs. And that was what really fed my soul. I didn't ever take the time to learn from other photographers or other people. I just did what sort of came naturally because I'd been photographing anything I could in all my life. So during this particular period, I tr would travel once or twice a year to out of the way places just to be able to photograph something different. And I would hike and photograph things, usually landscape stuff. Sometimes I went by myself and sometimes I would travel with a pro photographer. Hey, Deborah. Sorry, sorry? Jen. Could I'm you sorry. Click, would you click the swap displays button at the top? I think then we'll see the full screen version. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. No. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So most of the work that I did was landscape photography. And I was standing, taking this photograph on the left when I realized I was done. I thought there's, so, there's not anything special about taking the same photograph that a thousand other people have taken. And there were five other people around me taking the same thing. And I realized there must be something else to photography other than landscape photography. So I discovered the genre of street photography. The one on the right is one of the first ones I took uh, when I reclassified myself as a street photographer, which street photography typically is in the street, capturing a moment in time. Uh, you typically don't plan for it, but you could. And so as I, I turned the oper began turning the operation of the company over to the employees and I enrolled in graduate school and began to do soul searching about what did I really want to do with my life? Did I wanna manage spreadsheets and, and human resources and people and sales and marketing the rest of my life? Or did I wanna do something that, was, that really fed my soul? So I took, um, I have, um, one of my favorite books is by Abby Wambach and it's called Wolfpack and it's a, a book geared toward women leaders and she has here's she always talks about here's some of the old rules and here are the new rules so the old rule is stay on the path which I could have done or the new rule is create your own path and that's what I chose so I began to photograph people around Austin around Central Texas I would go to little fairs, to, um, to any event, whether it was inside or outside, it didn't have to be street photography, but I began to observe people and to photograph people just doing what they do. So a lot of, a lot of my photography initially as a street photographer was around Central Texas. But then I started to branch out and uh, I would go to events, to marches, and then and I went abroad. Um, I started looking for people abroad. 
to photograph. And this particular photograph was one that spoke to me. Uh, is this is what the soul of this is in Cuba. This is what the soul of Cuba is about. It's about resilience, diversity, and getting along. These are all in Cuba. This is in Bhutan. And I noticed as I was taking these photographs that I took photographs of men and women, but I noticed that women and young girls were what I really enjoyed the most. Oops, sorry, I got stuck there. And then I realized how can I, or thought about how can I support these women? How can I support women and people and cultures with my photography? And another thing from Abby Wambach's book is her victory is your victory, celebrate with her. Your victory is her victory, point to her. So how could I look at women and find women and celebrate them? So this past fall, uh, there were some murals going up uh, just south of Fifth Street on Lamar. And I noticed that most of the people painting were women. So I went out every day, sometimes twice a day, photographing the artists, not the art, but the artists. And I met, um, I met all of them, talked to all of them, talked to the men artists too, but um, I photographed mainly the women and then met the coordinator for the project and asked her how I could support them in the project and provide the photograph, the images for them to use. And I learned that women and art is varied. Another of Abby Wambach saying, the last one is old rule is play it safe, pass the ball. The new rule is believe in yourself, demand the ball. So my, the project that I'm working on right now um, is a book. It's uh, gonna be launched in September and it's an interview of 31 women entrepreneurs who have found a way to um, believe in themselves and either 30 of them have started businesses and one of them has worked from her way up from uh, an intern to CEO of the business. And so the last images are some of them. Very diverse group of women, diverse types of um, businesses. And it's all about the stories of them and the photographs of them in their businesses are meant to celebrate them. And the book is for them. So I'm serving them. And that's the last one. Thank you. Thanks so much. I have a question. Do you ever photograph in color or is it always black and white? It's a good, it's a good question. I always photograph in color and as a street photographer, most of it, um, I edit into black and white because I don't want the color to distract from, uh, sometimes color can be distracting. And so I don't want it to distract from the story. So I do, and I do, I, the mural project, I, most of it, I did in color and everything I posted on social media for them was in color because it was about their art. Right. And that's, that's theirs. Cool. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, does anyone have any questions for any of the artists book tonight?
There's a lot of gratitude in the chat. Lots of thanks. I was, I wanted to ask a question to um, Andrea. Your, your backgrounds have this like very um, kind of psychedelic kind of like, you know, all the, the checkered layers and the colors like how what kind of inspired you to get to that place of um just you know re you know using that that pattern or you know the checkered layered stuff that you do like, i don't know it's really cool i love it <laughs> thank you um well one of um actually um when i graduated from my MFA, I had a studio visit. Well, I was talking to my Thea and I was making a lot of these dark, um, darker, not using color a whole lot. And my Thea actually said, why don't you try some put color in your artwork and make hopeful? She kind of encouraged me to, and I listened to her. Um, and, um, and I really liked it. I think I was really hesitant to um to use color because I thought that I needed to know like I, I just didn't I think I had enough education about it but I I'm learning now that you, I'm learning by using color um so that's that's one of the my like influences that's a good question thank you 